Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about five tips to dominate those wall balls. Welcome to Box Life Magazine, where my goal is to make you a better athlete. Today we're gonna be talking about wall balls, everybody's favorite movement. I'm gonna give you five tips to help you dominate the movement. So the first thing we're gonna talk about today is distance. Knowing your distance is gonna be really important uh, for how you execute wall balls. So, if you stand too close to the rig, and this might happen to a lot of people, is that you're gonna shoot the ball straight up, but you're not gonna hit anything. So it's gonna come near the target, but you're gonna miss completely. The next thing, if you're too far away from the rig, you might throw the wall ball up, it'd be too much effort, but when it comes back down, the ball actually shoots you forward. Now I'm gonna give you an example of each of those things happening. So if I'm too close to the rig here, I'm too close to let the ball arc up. And, well there I can get it, but the closer I am, the more it's likely to shoot up into the air. The further I am, the more it's gonna pull me down when I shoot that wall ball. So what I wanna do is know my distance. How do I know my distance, all right? You wanna stand about arm's length from the rig, all right? This is gonna be your starting point. From here, you're gonna shoot that wall ball up. Give it about three or four shots. For me, that happens to be a good distance. For you, that might be too short or too far from the rig, okay? So, from here, once you've put your arm out, you said, hey, that distance is too far. Every time I shoot the wall ball up, it drags me forward. Then what you wanna do is, you wanna take about two inches forward, reshoot from there, okay? If you find that a little bit better, then that's your spot. If not, if it was too um, close at the first time, you wanna go back two inches, shoot from there, see if that's a better spot. Once you find your target, okay? If it was two inches forward, two inches back, three inches forward, three inches back, whatever it was, before you do your wall balls anytime, you wanna come here, maybe the first few times you wanna mark it with a piece of tape, okay? You wanna shoot your wall balls there. After you do wall balls a couple of times, you're gonna find that you can instinctively just come up to that spot without having to measure. Knowing your distance is gonna be extremely important to executing efficient wall balls. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the catch. This is gonna be a two-part tip. Where our hands are when we catch the ball, we wanna be on the underside of the wall ball, not on the sides. On the sides, it's gonna drag us down too much. So we wanna be under, on the underside about six to 10 inches apart. But then it's also where we are in our squat when we catch the ball. If we catch it too high and we're standing up completely, it's gonna to be too much impact. When we catch it, we're not gonna be able to do that many wall balls without breaking. If we catch it just right, it's gonna mi minimize the impact and we're gonna be able to go much longer, okay? So the first thing, our catch. You see my hands there? They're about six to 10 inches apart, right on the underside of the wall ball, okay? I'm gonna give you an example first of the wrong catch. If you saw when I did that, the ball hit me every single time. Ideally, what we wanna do is as the ball's coming down, we wanna come down with it so there's zero, minimize that impact, okay? You can tell by the sound every time it hits me. It's a really low impact sound. We're able to do that it's gonna keep our heart rate down. We're gonna be able to go much longer when we do wall balls. Tip number three. So we wanna be as, as efficient as possible with these wall balls. How do we do as many unbroken wall balls as possible? So we wanna be able to rest as much as possible while actually doing the wall balls. So what's gonna fatigue? A lot of times our shoulders fatigue before anything else. So what we wanna do is work in a little rest while we're doing wall balls. As the wall ball, the second we shoot the wall ball out, up, we're able to shake our hands real quickly, squat down and catch it in the most efficient way possible. So, wall ball's here, 
we come down as we shoot, shake, shoot, shake, shoot, shake. So if we leave our hands up here, right? We're just fatiguing the whole time, all right? If I ask you to just keep your hands up for five minutes, you're gonna get tired. So imagine doing wall balls and keeping your hands up the entire time. You're gonna fatigue much faster. Every time you shoot the wall ball up, shake it down. So correction, not every time, every five reps, every 10 reps. Know when you're gonna work in that shake and do it. Have a plan before you go into the workout, shake it out, you're gonna be able to do a lot more wall balls than broken. Tip number four, breathing. Breathing is gonna be super important, important if you wanna do, if you wanna be efficient at these wall balls. So a lot of times you can go five, six wall balls without really taking a breath. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna be super exhausted, your heart rate's gonna shoot up, okay? What I recommend, as you catch the wall ball, brace, hold your breath, exhale on the way up. Catch, hold, Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of this here. I'm gonna try to breathe loudly so you hear me. Not only is breathing gonna help you delay fatigue, but it's also gonna help you get a rhythm on the wall balls. Our last tip, I want you to be as explosive as possible on the way up. Okay, so you're gonna be rather controlled on the way down. Since you're going down most of the ride without the wall ball, you're gonna catch about here, and here you're gonna shoot up as fast as possible. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of how that works, and I'm gonna try to exaggerate it a little bit. So, we're down. Again, this is all about creating rhythm, right? So if you create rhythm with your breathing, if you can create that rhythm, that explosiveness on the way up, you can kind of break up your wall ball into two really smooth movements. The way down, where you're resting a little bit because the catch is minimal impact, and on the way up where you're shooting. It's kind of like a squat, it's a tempo squat. On the way down, it's controlled, shoot on the way up. There you go, five tips to help you dominate those wall balls. I really hope you enjoyed the video. So I'm gonna keep making videos like this. If there's anything you wanna know about, please let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out boxlifemagazine.com. Got a bunch of great content on there.